For the first time since 2021, the CDC is relaxing its guidelines for how to respond to COVID. People now testing positive no longer have to quarantine for five days. Ardilla Morello joins us now with the reason the CDC says COVID should be treated like any other flu. Dylan? Dave, it is only fitting that four years to the day, March 1st, 2020, is when New York State had its first confirmed case of COVID-19. COVID. Now, after all those years later, the CDC says that the disease is no longer the public health menace it once was. So what Never exactly was. does that mean for those who still contract it? You should you not die. interpret this guidance as we're done with COVID. You should interpret this guidance is that we're making it more facile for individuals to carry on with their lives, but at the same time protecting others. On Friday, the CDC changed some of its guidelines for Americans who have COVID, no longer recommending isolating for five days after a positive diagnosis. Instead, you should stay away from others for 24 hours once you're fever free and symptoms are improving. The CDC makes recommendations but ultimately, public Why do all these guys talk the same? Isolation you guidance like, from all have the same, will like, come from our state epic. public health department. Historically, New York State uh, has generally followed CDC recommendations. After resuming normal activities, people should still take precautions for the next five days, like wearing masks, purifying indoor air, and cleaning touch surfaces. The CDC also reports that by the end of last year, 98% of people in the United States had disease-fighting antibodies due to vaccination, prior infection, or both. So is Friday's decision the right one? There's always going to be a little bit of caution, right, whenever you start pulling back on some of these restrictions that we've had for a long time now. Um, I have no doubt. I think there's going to be careful eyes on this to see if we start seeing an increase in the amount of um, hospitalizations and death. COVID-19 is now in line with how other common viruses like the flu and RSV are managed. Still, experts say it's a disease you have to take seriously. I think the concern would be if people let their guard down, they may, you know, if they're really feeling poorly, they may not test themselves, they may not seek treatment, in which case, again, they may get worse or they miss, they may miss that opportunity to get treated. So again, another one of those that we have to keep an eye on if, uh, if this is, you know, laxed, if, is, if we're going to see increases in, you know, more severe illness. Even though we may be able to get out, out of isolation earlier, please use that mask. Please protect others. Please protect our most vulnerable. Now at this time, the updated recommendations are for the general public and community settings. There are no changes to the respiratory virus guidelines for the healthcare settings like hospitals or for those who are more at risk. All right, welcome to News from the Pew, uh, where we talk about stuff. And happy anniversary. And happy COVID anniversary, ladies and gentlemen. Happy anniversary, everyone out there. It's yep. I, I, I thought COVID about getting one of those or whatever. I didn't, I didn't get to it yet. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, eventually. It's fine. But do an anniversary um, cake after Lent for everyone. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. We're in Lent right now, so don't don't be – it's Friday, too, so don't be no, doing uh, that. Unless you're going to give a hundred, well, a $1,000 plate dinner to a certain father of the jab, then – it's okay. I mean, hey, wherever the wherever the bread is buttered, baby, wherever it's okay. only okay when they do it. But um, you know, not only that, IVF and all that other kind of stuff too. But that's that's kind of here where culture, culture um, news. Look down. Where's the sand? Let me put it in my head in the sand. Mm -hmm. no, what, yeah. What's that meme? Uh, then it hit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, oh, like, like Francis. Francis talk about the, talks about the jab. Oh, we can't. We can't. We, we, we got typed bad about that. Uh, Trump. We got. Let's go down and have a thousand. Give thousand dollars to Trump. Woo! -hoo! Catholics for Trump, baby. Catholics for Trump. Uh, that's that's what you're gonna be doing there. Um, but yeah, we got stuff to do. I was uh, I was away last week, so I'm glad everybody is uh, coming back. We had a successful martyr's walk. We have six more members, a part of the order. Um, and we have one coming up in May, May 16th, martyrswalk.com. If you are interested in testing your faith and your uh, physical strength, love to see you there. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about. Uh, we're going to catch up on some things and uh, try to talk about some other stuff as well. So let's see, Steve. I'm going to, you know, because I was gone for the week. What do you think we should talk about first? 
Yeah, let's go with Bloodbath. Let's start with Bloodbath McGrath, and then we'll go from there. How about that? I love it. Let's go. All right. So um, let's. I think Steve has a video for us for a preview, and let's get after it. And we'll we'll talk about it after. Over a period of thirty years, thirty four percent of the automobile manufacturing business in our country. Think of it. Went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think they think that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal. Those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're Love not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole, that's going to oh, be no. the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. Dot com reports tonight on the, quote, bloodbath at the RNC. Headlines calling it a, quote, bloodbath. Be a bloodbath. Not only is it going to be a bloodbath, but after they leave New Hampshire, it's a bloodbath on her home turf. Uh, obviously, what this is, this isn't uh, afterwards. This is just the history of the guys who are losing their minds over the bloodbath comment. The, the talking about that are for the last rushing year. to talk That's about really bloodbath. Really Trump has left a lot of corpses in his wake. I mean, we yeah. can count the bodies as part of the, quote, MAGA drive to take over Maricopa County. And the headline refers to it as an impending bloodbath. Columnist Charles Blow has a new piece for the New York Times entitled A Biden Bloodbath. 2018 midterms, you can bet that they 100 percent are fearing a slaughter. In fact, yeah. the word bloodbath yeah. and massacre come up frequently. The Republican Party will be destroyed. It's going to be a bloodbath. There's going to be a bloodbath one way or the other. Bloodbath blood for Bernie Sanders. It's been a bloodbath there. Shaping up to be a bloodbath. Head off a bloodbath in next year's crucial midterm. Off-year elections are often a bloodbath. This week's bloodbath for Democrats. A bloodbath at the ballot box. There could be a Republican bloodbath. They'll talk about a bloodbath. It's a bloodbath. I have to talk about you. And it's going to be a bloodbath all day long. Is in for a bloodbath. Hasn't been a bloodbath on the way down. Donald Trump bloodbath. Be a bloodbath. Predicted to be a bloodbath. May not be the bloodbath. It would be a bloodbath. More of a bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath in November. Possible Biden bloodbath this November. A bloodbath on... Every time you hear bloodbath, inject yourself with an MRA shot. Wall Street, there's going to be a bloodbath in in Alabama into a bloodbath. Obviously, there was a bloodbath. It was a bloodbath. We're down 800 points. This bloodbath at Department of Homeland Security? And it's a bloodbath today. There was going to be this bloodbath. Election bloodbath. It it could be a bloodbath for them. Bloodbath, possibly. Bloodbath that went through with the Attorney General. Bloodbath 99 days out. The bloodbath is going to look like presided over a bloodbath in the diplomatic corps. Absolute, in my opinion, bloodbath. Bloodbath, the Democrats are calling it a ticket sales, turned into a bloodbath. Ticket- <laughs> bloodbath. I, mean, bloodbath. I, would love to, I would love to post the what they've been saying for the last week videos, but I don't have the, the beeper. I mean, apparently it's okay <laughs> to cuss <laughs> on if it's okay when you do a type deal thing for them. I mean, Joe Scarborough is out there calling, you know, just, you know, he's losing it. Keith Oberman. He's lost it all, you know, years ago, but oh, he's, he's, he's lost it in 2016. So, oh, yeah. Hey, Pelosi's out there going. I mean, everywhere their brothers and sisters out there yelling, look at this. We can't have that. He's a monster bloodbath. All because he said that. That's just a clip of them saying it for the last four to eight years, whatever. And obviously the context is it's going to be a bloodbath in the car industry. But, you know, we need the drama. Yep. Well, they need to start drumming up. You know, they already cut a promo. You know, linking that to Charlottesville and all that other kind of stuff. It's like, wow, you guys are pretty quick. That's pretty impressive. I mean, the the fact is the only thing they have is to try and make it to scare little college kids and, and stupid liberals into thinking that Trump, you know, is the second coming of, of, of Hitler and the brown shirts are going to be marching out. And if you don't like, like, if you don't like Trump, I get it. You know, there's a lot not to like about Trump. And if you don't want to vote for him, that's completely fine. I don't care. But to to parrot the lines that he's like this evil dictator or that he's Trump or that the country's blah, blah, blah. Like, folks, you don't realize how bad the country is right now. I mean, everything is awful right now. It's it's technically pretty terrible. Um, and, and you're not going to vote for Trump 
because you think he's a mean man. If you vote, if you don't want to vote for somebody based on how nice they are, you're kind of an idiot. I mean, let's just be real at this point. You're kind of stupid and you probably shouldn't be allowed to vote um, because you if, Ch- you it, Ch- you're not Ch- demonstrating any kind of actual thinking skills. You're you just Charles doing Barclay everything based on emotion. Gonna, you got Barkley saying he's going to punch anybody, any black man who wears a MAGA hat. And was that there's a one dude like six, eight Jack Diesel Terminator going, hey, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, the, where the uh, the Trump mugshot. And then, of course, Trump yeah, was like. It. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, I wasn't meaning it. Shut up. Whatever, dude. Barkley's compromised because he's on CNN now and he's all about the the alphabet communities and all. You know, he's just been the checks nice and big. And we all know Barkley's got a gambling habit. So, you know, he's got to pay for that somehow. So he might as well endorse, you know, whatever the Man, He wasn't like that always. He was a uh, geo peer down there in Arkansas. So, I, mean, he was- I mean, if it, if anything else, he was at least like a Democrat that made sense. Like he yeah. was an old school blue dog Democrat, technically, you know, but at least no, now he's completely, he's been completely broken. So, and that's right, bearded Catholic. We're going to mention that in a little bit, uh, a little later, like Candace's, Candace has been kicked to the curb at the Daily Wire, you know, because she dared to question a certain narrative about a certain group. And um, now she's gone. But you guys keep you guys keep worshiping the Daily Wire that it's some kind of alternative and <laughs> keep telling me I'm stupid for saying that Knowles and and uh, and Wall should leave because I really can't work for the guy that runs it. But hey, whatever, man, you know, you guys idolatry is idolatry. No matter what, it, it doesn't I, matter. Oh, I'm a huge fan of the Daily Wire. Well, you know what? they do? Oh, it doesn't matter. OK, well, you're idol. It's idolatrous in that way. I admit it's I haven't matter. watched two minutes of Daily Wire, so. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't either. They're too, so. they're too national. They're not, well, they're just like anything else. They're too nationalistic. They're too centralistic. And we go back to what we said a couple of weeks ago. If we were doing federalism in the sense of, like, I'm about to move to South. We might move to South Carolina next couple of weeks because we're getting, you know, because our renter, they're trying to sell here. I look at it going, I'm moving to another country. She's already talked about, man, you know, we have to change your driver's license or this. Like, oh, yeah, because we're leaving to another country. That's why Mm -hmm. you have state license for each one. So if we thought that way, which many states are starting to try to get that way, Daily Wire doesn't exist. Fox News, CNN, NSNBC don't exist. No, it does exist. Your state, your state newspaper, your state uh, televisions, your state reporting, things like that. Because right now, like I said, I'm in North Carolina, South Carolina. I do not give two hoots. If you live in Washington State, forgive me. I'm not bashing you. I don't care what happens in Olympia. Nope. <laughs> Just nobody, should, nobody outside Washington State should care what happens in Washington State. What happens nope. again? Like you see, what's his face? Like Gruesome News in California. He's always tweeting. I can't believe they're doing this in Arkansas. I can't believe they're doing this in North Carolina. Mark Richardson, the governor, the, you know, is terrible. Dude, what about California? Get your backyard fit, which it, we always have to be nationalistic. The southern border. What southern border? If Texas goes, then the southern border of your one nation is now Oklahoma. So right. what? And Texas can can Texas doing what they're doing. You're you're there. They're going. You're you're tweeting that away. Going. This is what we should be doing. Yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter is, folks, Texas is Texas is under attack. And if you think of being hyperbolic, you can watch this. This was yesterday. That was a group of about a hundred peaceful, loving doctors, like lawyers, and, and presidential candidates rushing the border, attacking American citizens, Texas citizens, speaking better, attacking Texas citizens, bursting through that. Luckily, there was a secondary fence that they couldn't get off of. Sorry if there's a little bit of cuss in there, but that's a that's a decent uh, fence right there. You're not uh, breaking the that down yeah you're not getting through that fence which by the way you know when people like me were like hey man we need a wall and then you had people like well walls keep people out keep people in too i'm like yeah no kidding that's all right you, you deal with that there were people who were fighting against the idea we don't need uh we don't need a wall this that and the other folks no 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 you don't live down here we need one <laughs> we need one bad I want one that's 30 feet high with Gatling guns every six feet. And I want, um, and I want, uh, want I want, Colonel Jessup? I want, I want all of it, man. I mean, look at the border of Egypt. Egypt has one, I think with Syria, like they have like six different layers of fencing with armed guards at the top. Not Mexico have one on their Southern. 
Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, they have. They're armed and all that stuff as well. So the fact they don't like they, they don't like Venezuelans coming through or, or yeah. something. I That's what why they let them they through. Like. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's it, it's absolutely despicable to see all this take place. And I mean, how how much longer until Texas has to literally just be sovereign and say, you know, whatever the Fed says, whatever the Fed say. That's why I keep well, asking. What? <laughs> That's what I keep asking. Come on, guys. What do you need down there? <laughs> right. I mean, at what point do Texans just say, whatever, dude, we're going to put up the biggest wall in the world. I don't care what the Fed say. We're going to do whatever we can here. And we'll start putting a wall around New Mexico, too, because if they're going to let them in over there, we're going to have checkpoints here. And, you know, the fact mm -hmm. the the separation, you know, for anybody that's civil divorce or national divorce, or whatever the case may be. The, the fact is that Texas is going to be put in a spot where and then and then there was a report that Mexico said, well, we're not taking any of these people you deport back. And Texas is like, I don't care. We're going to drop them off at your front door and they're not coming back this way. They can go they can go to Arizona if they want, but they're not coming back here. Uh, and it's just it. And you know, as bad as I hate to say that's, you know, you're terrible over human human disposal, it says. But it was funny when they were busting them up to New York and. Uh, Chicago and all that, just going, well, you guys, you're the one that wants it. Hey, Grusom Newsom. They, yeah. you're, you're the one that wants it. We don't. You want them to come in this way. Take them. That's fine. Yep. You can have, we don't want it. And why can't you do that? It's kind of like my body, my choice. Oh, it's only my body, my choice. If you don't you just want to kill somebody, you want to kill that kid. It's not your body, no choice. If you want to avoid some injection, you must do that. Even the again goes back to the father of the jet, the deep state. Did you see the New York Times clip? No, no, I here's didn't. the New yeah, York Times deep state video. Trump is obsessed with the deep state. The deep state, deep state, the deep state is destroying our nation. Either the deep state destroys America or we destroy the deep state. And many Republicans are widening his paranoia. These unelected bureaucrats ruining this country. From a cabal of security agents to... The sick political class that hates our country. If elected, Trump's vowed to gut the federal government. Reinstate the Schedule F executive order and, quote, fire rogue bureaucrats. But who are these bureaucrats and what makes them so dangerous? We needed answers, so we took a trip across America. In 100 yards, take the exit. In search of the people behind this threatening entity. <laughs> First stop, Huntsville, Alabama. Sure looks like some nefarious government activity happens around here. You have reached your destination. Anyway, it, go, it goes into this a little bit. And, and, and the New York Times, right? Nobody who's thinking this way, like us, watches New York Times, looks at New York Times. So I, I was like, why are you guys posting out on your thing just to mock it? But I mean, what, has They're he done anything to off. the deep state? He, I mean, he promised to get rid of it, but has did that happen four years ago? No, he grew the swamp. So again, it goes back to this are you guys, are we being had? Which I, you know, you don't get in. Unless you're selected, so I mean, again, I'll yeah. I'll bet the car, the farm, that he's going to win this thing because they won him in this time. What reasons? I don't know. Probably just like the little after Obama, you needed a little release, so we'll probably get the steam out a little bit. Or so it's not nothing's going to change. Do I hope you know, interest rates go down and all this? You're seeing the same thing that the Dow happening. I think they would 900 point drop yesterday. That was happening during Trumpzilla's reign. You had sky high uh, Dow points, 40,000 40, uh, 40, 40, at the time, record high, record high. You got Brandon, he's got record high, record high. Same things are happening now than then. I mean, it's almost like a little playlist in a sense, kind of getting you ready for what's, I don't know who's coming. Well, Dr. Paul and uh, Mike Glo uh, uh, General Glenn. Okay. Where mm -hmm. uh, some sudden thing is going to happen, I believe. I believe in that theory of the black swan. Yes, <laughs> it's going to pop up, and uh, it's it's not going to be controllable. But people, you ask, what can they do? I think the most important thing. Doesn't know how that's going to happen. He, you know, he's not. He's not. Uh, wasn't speculating about exactly how something like that is going to happen. Meaning, you know, that the 2024 election doesn't occur. But that's pretty much what he said. Was that the. He can see a scenario, as, as I can, a scenario that 
that we don't have an election in 2024. That's some other, and they call them black swans. Some other black swan type event occurs, or maybe yeah. there's some, maybe there's a. So I mean, there's highly possible. And then you got the, I mean, what was it? Poland comes out saying they can uh, they can attack Russia in a couple of years. So you got people still ginning up the Russia war. They can't wait to go to Russia. You got Israel still going down. Still, I mean, we're, we just gave one point six billion. Uh, was that a billion or a trillion spending package again? Just who, who even knows at this point. So yeah, there you could see. I mean, because that was the thing with the election thing. Some kind of war going on. You can see them take over. Say we're not having. A, we're suspending elections. That has happened before in other places. So what would could you imagine how ticked off people would be if that happens? And what would be the response? You got that movie Civil War out. You got, uh, I mean, would would they send the troops into to stop things? Or was it they? We talked about this a couple months ago with the, uh, 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 they did that. What was that 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 book series that they made in a TV series? Uh, the analyst becomes a uh, terrorist. Oh, fighter. Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan. Uh, uh, season two, he's in. Oh yeah, he was in uh, um, Venezuela or Haiti or something like that. Not yes, Haiti, and they do the same. They ended up having to suspend the election because he's a tyrannical guy, you know, imprisoning his, you know, anybody. Oh, yeah, they did a coup. Him. They did a coup on the show. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, in real so, time. I mean, and you know, just the wording you see going on, going, man, they they're ginning things up for stuff like that. Could it happen? Of course, may it may it might happen. Don't know. I mean. There's always they shut down the world four years ago last week. So if you came up to me 20 years ago, say, you know what has gonna happen? Now hear me out. They're gonna shut down the planet over the sniffles, and they're gonna inject you with I mean everything. Shut down, they're gonna put you know cardboard things in in, in, in seats and stadiums. Uh they're gonna have you wear masks all over the place. <laughs> they're gonna have you scared. If you would have told someone that 10 years ago, they would have locked you up and put you in a straight jacket. They did that. So everything's all anything you can think of that's like, hey, that's nuts. Just remember, they shut down the world four years ago and they made you scared of the sniffles. <laughs> yep. And it worked. And people are still muzzling up right now, still fighting, and still thinking, oh, we gotta be scared. We gotta be worried. And anything's on the table at this point. Nothing would surprise me. Nope. I mean, that's that's the thing. I was talking to um Eric from Trad Cat Trad Night Trad Cat Night yesterday, and he's like, "What about this situation? What about this scenario? You know, what about this before the election?" And I was like, "Hey, man, if you told me that in 2016, I'd be like, ah, ha, ha, that's funny." Now I'm like, "Yeah, I could see four of those happening. <laughs> like, I could easily see four of it in any of those in succession, uh, together working in concert, whatever the case may be." And if you think it's foolish, um, my well, response before, is before you go to the next, I mean, here's Hannity being as bipartisan as you can be. Oh, he loves racist. It. He's got to do something. Sexist, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, transphobic that want dirty air and water. In other words, Democrats are using fear and division to mask what has been a terrible four years under Biden. I repeat, they cannot run on are you better off than you are four years ago. This is all. Now, so if you're going to be honest, anybody that went down to that thousand dollar plate dinner, what happened for you? Businesses were shut down over the sniffle. You were you were not allowed to work. They your money's inflated. Your house value right now. We were talking about this off air. Four hundred thousand, five hundred, that half a million dollars. I'm in a half a million dollar home that I'm renting. That wasn't half a million dollars a couple years ago. It's like tripled in value value because not because the property's gotten better, because the money has gotten worse. And why? During that time, they gave you out those checks not to do anything. Hey, stay at home. We're testing UBI at this. They didn't call it UBI, but you had universal basic income practiced for a whole year. You got that check. And no one cared. Anybody that didn't get that check and said, you know what? I'm throwing that away. No, they cashed in. Inflated money, more money. Spending money out of the oblivion. The national debt is skyrocketing. Oh, but my, and they're still cranking it out. More inflation. My house right now is worth four hundred and eighty thousand dollars, folks. I did not pay four hundred and eighty thousand dollars for my house. Because yeah, so, no, there's no way you put twenty percent down on the down payment. It would be like hundred thousand that you. I mean, I'm a YouTuber, so obviously I had the money to spare. Like yeah. I could easily just toss it around, but you know, it's just that that's that's crazy. I just looked at it on Zillow. I'm like, that is it's nuts. not. 
That is people think, oh yeah, we're happy times are here. No, and you know, and Brandon's out there talking about how the gas prices are better. Well, yeah, if you compare it to five dollars a gallon, yeah, three dollars is better. We talked about that last year, saying there's going to be a time when people are going to say you do three dollars cheap. Yep. <laughs> and yeah. Has it gone under three dollars? Maybe in South Carolina, it's been under for a couple of weeks. Fluctuates yeah. between low three, high two eighties, two nineties. Yeah, uh, because of the tax. But dude, Sunday night two ninety nine. Now it's three oh five. Yeah, you know, three fifteen. Two eighty seven so, yeah, is the lowest. It's gotten I've better from maybe a year ago, maybe. But still, I mean, it started yeah. here, went up to here, now it's down here. Oh, it's gotten better. Yeah, it depends what you look like. It's, it's like the. It's like if you look, if you get the book uh, Dissolving Illusions. She goes into the, uh, the, uh, the injections, the vaccines at the time. You'll see the spike and spike, and it's starting to go away, go away. And all at the bottom here is where the, the, the jabs came through. And, and that's where everyone that's science, look, hey, look, it's gone because that came in. No, it was already down. You don't see the bigger, you don't see the, the, you know, the 30,000 sky view from it. Just like, you know, oh, it's for the whole four years been better. All right, let's look at it. And honestly, and no, Nobody at the rallies is going to say that. They're going to say, hey, you know, let's bring the guy back in that mm-hmm. shut the world down, that destroyed your freedom, <laughs> just, just destroyed liberty. Two we- what was it? Two weeks to plan the curve was four two, years two, ago. Two, two weeks, weeks to slow ago. the spread. Two weeks yeah. to slow the spread, baby. That's what it was. You know, flatten the curve. Flatten the curve. It was all about Je- the and Jeffrey Tucker's been nailing this the last couple of days. I mean, uh, Brownstone in, uh, you know, was a Brown, Brownstone, uh, uh, it's, I got the link right here. I'll show it. Go take a look at it. It's a great, fantastic read. Uh, where is it at here? There it is. Brownstone Institute. Four weeks ago this week, freedom was torched. That's just one of the articles he wrote. Yep. Yep. Oh, excuse me. So it's, you know, people want to, they want to get by, excuse me, they want to get by on Trump and they want to make it think that, it's going to be, folks, it's going to be 20, what, 2017 when gas was cheap and, you know, low inflation and everybody had a job and everything was good and the good times were rolling. Folks, that's never coming back. It's it, The normal reality that you know of, the, the normal you desire is gone. You we know, said that I mean, in 2001, 2001. Yeah. Yeah. That's your new normal. New normal is getting frisked and basically is sexually abused. In the TSA line, all for your safety. And how many times yeah. I, I drove people to the airport and Uber, and they say, well, you know, I don't like it, but, you know, as far as say the line. Are you kidding me? Like, do you think the guy with the sewed on uh, badge is going to save you? Yeah, they're glorified I mean, Walmart greeters. I was, I, was in, uh, I was in the North Carolina at CLT airport last week, and I was waiting for a buddy to get through because I was stupid enough. I pay the government 85 bucks to go through a little bit quicker. Um, and so I was standing there and I was watching these people walk in and no offense to any of them, but this is literally, it's not something that they do because they want to keep people safe. Right. They may say that on the application. They may say that in the interview. It's just a job guys. It's just a job. They look through the screen, beep, beep. They, you know, they throw this thing out. They kind of, they do this stuff. They're not into it. And if something gets by them, which we've seen in red tests before, they've gotten stuff by them. They don't care. It's no skin. Like, it's a government agency. If there was a terror the attack because they did, they messed it up, they would have been like, oh, we'll investigate it and do some stuff and, I had, and whatever. I had a friend of mine that used to live in Dallas, and he said he saw that at the at the Dallas International Airport a couple months before all this went down. Just like everything else. You saw it. There was... It was rehearsed. Everything was rehearsed. I mean, even the cyber, you talk about the cyber attacks going on right now. Cyber Polygon, anybody, we talked about, I talked about that two years ago. It, this stuff, they're telling you, they're giving you the blueprint. Like I said, we're on page 56 right now, section two. Just check that out. That's, you know, you got an idea what's coming out. But I mean, if you just know what's coming, that's what Ron Paul ended up, that clip doesn't say. He's, he's like, if you just educate yourself, knows what's coming up. One, it won't be as scary. Two, we're Catholics anyway. Who cares? If a nuke comes down on you, when you're in a good state of grace, who gives a darn? You know, you've been yeah. praying good. You've been doing everything. Fine. They nuke, nuke me. They're fine. It gets you to heaven fast. As long as you're in a state of grace, remember. But uh, it's not that. It's not that. And then you talk about food. They're going after food. Yes, grow your own. There's always a solution to all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's pretty much, guys, 
you know, if you've been watching this show or any show for any length of time, you know, getting your own food, uh, either from like Patriots for Patriots or my Patriots supply or whatever, having some kind of backup starting to grow. I know Steve's been talking about it. Oh, okay. Just grow like pain anything. medicine. Yeah. You know, what you go to the grocery store for pain medicine. Ever heard fever few, a fever few? You grow that. that. That's that's a pain medicine herb. Just grow it. Know how much that costs? What? How much? Dollars for a pack of 300 seeds. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to come up with a prescription. Just know how to use, you know. I was out there the other day eating dandelions. You know how good? I mean, just no one knows about this stuff. I didn't either until I started looking up. But they're spraying. Here's the, there was a story here the other day. Uh, let's see if I can pull that up. Uh, not not that one. Whoops, I can't say I can't say. There it is. Your herbs and spices might contain arsenic, cadmium, and lead. Love it. 126 products from McCormick, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, and other popular brands. So those are the top dog ones, right? Those are where you go with top dog, top money. You're not expect that's where you know the hippies will go. That's where the people with money are gonna go. Yeah, it's all it's all sprayed with garbage. You know what? I, I wish I would have taken a photo of it. My uh oregano, depending I guess that's the European way to say it, oregano. That thing is just booming right now. You get it at Whole Foods, it's probably sprayed with arsenic carbon lead. So now 50 cents, dump it in. You got a perennial for the rest of your life. Yeah. It's not sprayed yeah. with lead. <laughs> That's true. Um, and, you know, it just takes the the will to do it, the the will and want to actually do it. And a lot of people don't, um, you know, they don't actually want to because it's just easier to go to the store and grab ibuprofen or whatever the case may be and just choke that down and well, kind of. There was a story out the other day about taking a pill to lose weight. Isn't that Ozempic? And that it, it's one of those. So. It's just the yeah. other day. I'm looking at it going, I, need, I just I think it's mind. diabetes. It's like diabetes medicine or whatever, which pushes the sugar out or something. It's it, it of course it's bad for you, but it's the and popular thing right now for speaking people. Speaking of that, I didn't read the whole thing, but though you say that, I found this plant from India. It's called moringa, moringa plant. Uh, I I followed directions how to get it Germany. I got two of them growing right now. You know what that is? It pretty much cures all that not stuff right there. It detoxifies your body, and it's got protein and <laughs> every mineral you can think of. They call it the miracle plant. Not many people have it in their area. Nobody even knows what it is. Yeah, so, that's just things like uh, that. Just it's just digging. And Judson Carroll, find him on Twitter. Get his books. He's got a book on. I, I have in the other room. Where I'd get it on this priest back in Australia that all this stuff. I mean, St. Benedict herb, all this incredible stuff. I'm going to get him on the show one of these days. I just haven't done it yet because I thought we were going to move next week. I don't know where we're going to move. It's like three weeks. It could be tomorrow to the end of the week. Now it's thankfully we're not doing it Holy Week now, but yeah. so might not have any shows you know, for a couple of weeks, but he's on the well, radar. He's on, he's on yeah. the, the do list. Yep. That, that is true. And because people need to know about this. Because it was kind of in vogue during COVID because everyone's in the house. They're trying to figure mm -hmm. out stuff because supply chain was. Now that everything is kind of ramped up back to somewhat normalcy, everybody doesn't care anymore, right? It doesn't doesn't even matter. Uh, uh, somewhat so. normalcy. This is still going on. U.S. airport, nasal swabbing, expanding to Chicago, Miami. This was, what day was this? March 12, 2024. But it wasn't yeah. March 12, 2020. That's still going on. Oh, yeah. Here's, a, here's from there. Why is CDC now treating COVID like it's the flu? Because <coughs> it is. Because it always was. Because it it always was. <laughs> here's RFK Jr. The Trumpster uh, clearly hasn't learned from his uh, COVID era mistakes because you know, he's still saying, you know, pushing up. Hey, that was, you're welcome, Joe. Nine month approval time, 12 years would it take you. So, you know, the father of the jab who locked down everyone. But, I don't. I don't really look to uh, Robert F. Kennedy as some kind of hope because the guy's a psycho on everything else. So. Oh, I know, I know. He's great on this topic. He's, he's yeah, been great right. against the, those guys. But yeah, he's. I mean, he's your someone record. got on me. Who to pick? We. It's the lesser of two evils. All right, let's pretend that this is the nation. This that you got this whole one nation nonsense that you everyone loves saying, the Lincoln mentality, one nation under God, whatever. And uh, let's pretend that three hundred twenty million people. You get to pick out two. Raise your hand if you think that makes any sense. You th now, even here, you go to a state, how many people are running gubernatorial? 
We had three in the runoff and two, uh, three in the GOP and four or five in the Democrat one in North Carolina. So you got at least nine. And then, okay, that goes down to the final two, kind of like the final four still. But, I mean, you're talking 200,000 people versus 320,000 people. And you, your pick is two? All right, well, it's the lesser two evil. Well, guess what that gives you? And then you do that every four, every four years. It's the lesser two evil. It's the lesser two evil. It's the lesser two evil. It's freaking evil. It's just, yeah, it's just evil, man, at this point. <laughs> and yeah. then you wonder, how do we get to this? It's like Jordan Peterson. Well, you know, we pushed back just a little bit. And all of a sudden, we're 38 yards behind where we stopped. And we're like, how'd we get here? I don't know. You just keep doing the same thing, thinking, oh, this will change. Yeah. Trump going to do it. We're going to do it again. The keys to the thing in four more years. Because, you know, at the lockdown, wasn't locked down enough. It's- no, it wasn't. It wasn't at all. And it's not uh, saying that Biden, Brandon's any better. Just they all on the same team. They all suck. It's, you know, it's, that was there was a guy that said that uh, politicians should be changed just like diapers. For the same reasons, they're all full of you know what, and, yeah, and they really look, are. You, you want to fix things? Think low. Well, how many how many episodes we talked about that we see? Hey, look what Texas is doing. Look what Arkansas is doing. Look what IVF and it was Alabama roll tide. You, know, you can end these things. Porn in Texas end it because of, act locally. The DC could say they scores could say whatever. Go pound sand. You end this stuff right there. You know what you're ending in federal? Not a thing. Nope. Not a thing at all. It is. It is what it is, man. And it's just, it's just a continuation. It's just a continuation of all this. So, oh, you know, especially one. when you have judges, you know, judges yeah. like uh, Brown Jackson. I think you were trying to set that up, saying stuff like this. Well, my biggest concern is that your view has the First Amendment hamstringing the government in significant ways in the most important time periods um, um I mean, guarding what would, your what would you have the government do i've heard you say a couple times that the government can post its own speech but in my hypothetical um you know kids this is not safe don't do it um is not going to get it done and so I, I guess some might say that the government actually has a duty to take steps to protect the citizens of this country, and you seem to be suggesting that that duty cannot manifest itself in the government encouraging or even pressuring uh, platforms to take down harmful information. So, can you help me? Because <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm really worried about that. Um, because you've got the First Amendment operating um, in an environment of threatening circumstances from the government's perspective, and you're saying that the government can't interact with the source of th- those problems. Darn me harder, daddy. Right. That's a sitting Supreme court justice. She's going to be great for the next 20 years, man. She's going to be so much fun. Right. That's um, right. I mean, I, I don't the, even know. I don't even know. They're, they're trying to bring up that whole social media uh, censorship thing, which, all right. They were there. That was the thing we talked about a couple months ago too. So, all right. Are you a platform or are you a press? And they're, they they say they're a platform, and then but they're acting like a press. So if you're acting like a press, you don't get the, uh, I guess the tax breaks and tax credits and things like that as you are as a platform. So that's what Rand Paul was trying to get a couple of months, years ago. What are you? You're violating this section that you're set you're setting yourself in when you're acting like this, but you're saying you're this. You can't be both. Pick one or the other. And now there's like, oh, can we set? Can we censor? Well, was that Congress shall not pass? I, and that's not saying San Francisco now shall not pass. Congress shall not no. pass. That means Scotus, you ain't got anything to say about this. Congress shall not pass. The whole Bill of Rights, by the way, if you want to know what the 14th Amendment really says, because <laughs> that's where this is coming from, here's the original meaning of the 14th Amendment by the Abbeville Institute. Just type it in, look it up. It's two hours long. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, uh, people that are talking about the uh, what it is, the original intent of it uh very good to watch good because most people have no idea what that is and most people especially on tv daily wire fox cnn all those guys are in corporation corporation east us uh, you can you can hear that by well the second amendment is here from the kingdom here the kingdom off uh, here from it, gate the the ice gate and back the first amendment is sacrosanct from here to the sun and around mars and uranus and coming back you know the it's when you hear stuff like that, or well, you're, you know, if you're in a city and you hear, well, the First Amendment, 
dude, if you're in an argument in Greenville, South Carolina, there's nothing to do with the first ten, the first ten amendments. It's what the Congress, with the general or national government, cannot do to the states. Hence, why you have a state constitution, which literally has this stuff. And one for a couple decades ago that was a cussing was banned. It was because they looked to ban cussing in California a couple years ago. Could you imagine anybody going, well, that's a violation of the First Amendment? That's no, that's California acting like California. You want to ban cussing? You can ban speech if they want to. If you want to ban porn, which used to be banned in, the, in there before Clinton made it a First Amendment thing. You see what happens if you make it centralized and it's never good. Uh, it was, which was funny about that Italian uh, meme. You saw that come out in 19, it was 1861. Oh, what year was that? That happened. Everything got centralized. What a year for centralization. Uh, but yeah, here's that. Here's the TikTok. Uh, here's a, what would you go with? Coke or Pepsi? Which one is the, the a Republican? Here's a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> we already had some Pepsis on. Here's a Coke. Same After thing. we introduced our bill, TikTok went into panic mode. They lied to their users, saying Congress was going to ban TikTok using young kids as political pawns. TikTok's growth stunt proved our point. What if on election day, TikTok sent out an alert saying our elections were canceled? We must act now. Today, we're sending a message to the CCP that we are going to deflate the 140 million spy balloons that they have installed on American phones. We <laughs> must act and pass this bill today. Thank you. <laughs> the spy balloon thing. It's all TikTok's fault because they're bad guy China. Wait a minute. <laughs> How many American I, I companies? Don't I don't American know. American companies, billions in TikTok. In TikTok, it's like sixty percent. There is Americans own sixty percent of the capital of TikTok. Just yeah, remember that yeah. when you say your local guy goes, "Say hey, you know, it's it's Chinese." Now, nah. I don't know. I mean, I've been a big fan of uh, of getting rid of TikTok. I think TikTok is absolutely dangerous and has been chief in warping the minds of of uh, the entire, you know, Gen Z and, and Gen Alpha and all that stuff. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, you can't trust the government to do it because all they did was take it and turn it into a, you know, a Patriot Act for, for social media and for the Internet. So um, without further ado, I'm going to ask John to, to comment. How long on was that. John waiting? <laughs> John was waiting in the wings to perfectly jump in just like the macho man to run in and, uh, and, and give us a flying elbow of truth. About I didn't see, dude, if, you, if you were in there for a while, I didn't see you. I, was, I, yeah. I clicked the delete you thing. Waiting, and I saw your you face, waiting, man. That's all. <laughs> so your, your thoughts on the, uh, the TikTok ban and ceding more control to the federal government, John. Uh, I mean, that kind of the accommodations that you could, oh, they got him. Uh, yeah. You sound, you sound just as good as, uh, uh, Charlie Brown coming in great from Tron. That's what I'm telling you that much. You're coming in great from from the area of Tron right about now. <laughs> well, let's see what you get is uh, log off your uh, your speaker and try back or microphone. Try back in. Yeah. All right. How's that one? Ah, we can hear you. Okay. Perfect. All right. I'll have some something to go on. Yeah, I would say just a combination of what you two guys just said. Um, of course, TikTok is is has a lot wrong with it. Is not good. Is not productive. Is not healthy. There's probably a lot of really really bad stuff that's on there. Uh, and yet, like the thing that just makes me want to pull my very few remaining hairs out is it's just simple. Like, why are the kids on TikTok in the first place? If we're really worried about kids, you know, why are the kids on there in the first place? It's because the parents have just ceded their parental authority to these electronics. So, I mean, if we're talking about an issue, yes, this is a, a symptom that you would say, okay, the body is sick. But then you got to ask, like, why is the body sick? Like, are you eating junk all day or are you letting your body go and just like not doing anything with it? Uh, you know, if we were to ask the same things that, that habitually modern folks ask about their own bodies, when you get to bodily health, you know, a lot of these same folks that would make these comments right here are, are going to have some things to say about what you're ingesting or how you're you know, what you're doing to uh, exercise, things like that. But they're not asking about the root cause here. And it's it's just, you know, uh, complete, not just delegation of parental authority, but giving it up, you know. And so like, to, to say that this is a problem, it, you, you want to say yes and. 
and, and then just follow up the end with something, uh, something sensible, you know, but uh, no, we don't have that. So they, they want to blame a boogeyman and they found themselves a boogeyman that, you know, can play the part like, like Rick said, can, uh, TikTok can play the boogeyman part pretty well. You know, they're, they're, the Chinese connections, even if I, like I heard the, um, a, a little bit of the bit that, um, what's his name, who was talking to Tucker about it, uh, Rand Paul, you know, he, he, he talked about how they've established some stuff here in the States and invested lots and lots of dollars to, you know, kind of show their uh, attention to the interest of the American government and say, okay, we're going to play by the rules. Okay. I mean, well, whatever, if you can flash a dollar sign at somebody and get the, the government off your back, then that, that just shows another reason why we don't want to trust the government with anything else that, you know, uh, they might be regulating. So, I mean, on, on either side, it's just, it's a humiliation, uh, but I would say the biggest humiliation should be on the side of the, um, that the parents who have let their children get on this thing unsupervised anyway. So like it's it's too late in the game to to worry about. Oh, let's ban TikTok. You don't think they're going to find another app or another thing, a social media account to use? It's going to be just as dangerous. Give me a break. <laughs> that yeah, that's a hundred percent correct. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if it's not that, it's it's going to be something else. And and so yeah, it it's kind of like whack a mole at that point, Steve. Well, they say, you know, that, oh, well, China's getting all your info. Where do you think Twitter or X, Facebook, your regular your regular uh, search engine with cookies and all that? Oh, speak of that, uh, since Russia is supposed to be the, you know, creep now, not just the bad guy, but you're supposed to say that they're also, they're also going after the big new world order because they were kicked out of the WEF. Russia rolls out VIP ban on Nationwide. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, just yeah, Cause perfect. They don't it because you know, what? How dare you got nothing to hide? We got, and they won't be the only ones to do that. Nope, not at all. Uh, not at all, man. Not at all. It's just, and that, and the fact is, it's going to get even worse because you have. Let me see if I can find this. I should have had it ready, but uh, I'm trying to find one that's not so bad. Um, I guess this one will be the best one. Give me one second, guys. Uh, as we are speaking right now, there is a terror attack that's taking place in the city in Russia, uh, in a concert hall, in a mall. A uh, couple Ukrainians, a bunch of Ukrainians came in and uh, have slaughtered innocent civilians. Now, I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm not trying. Yeah, there you go. That one's that was actually pretty rough to watch because you actually see people getting, you know, laid out and, and blown away. Um, but that's only going to make things worse, guys. It's only going to escalate this conflict even worse. And I mean, that's that's a picture of the concert hall right now in real time. Uh, it's an absolute bloodbath that's taking place there. And I will use the word bloodbath. Drink. Now it's probably gonna, <laughs> so it's probably going to get us removed. But still, that's that's exact. That was the Corcus Concert Hall in Moscow. Um, that is, that was attacked. That's inside of a mall. The mall is being attacked right now. It's absolutely awful. So pray for the people of, of, of Russia and Moscow, especially. Well, you know, I suppose they're evil. They're the evil bad guys. Yeah, right? Russia, Russia. I mean, they're, they, it's, it's just like the Hamas thing. You got bad guy, good guy. It's always bad guy, good guy. It's never could be, oh, both suck. It can't, be, it can't be anything like that. It's just got to be, uh, we was one side Rich, or the other. Well, Pick Steve, a team. You have to make sure you put the correct flag in your bio. Well, well and then you got like, uh, uh, who's the blowhard up in uh, uh, the, Pal she's a Palestinian, uh, Icar, Icar Omar. Uh, uh, Ilian, Ilian Omar. She, she's, uh, the people are getting upset at her for wearing a, or putting a Palestinian flag outside her uh, room or uh, her office. Well, I have a couple weeks ago, you had another guy who's dressed in IMF uniform. Where's the outrage there? Oh, no, because that's acceptable, and this is not. They're already telling you who th the media tells you who you're supposed to like, who you're supposed to hate, get angry, get triggered, and move on from there. We'll tell you. Watch the talking heads online. <laughs> yeah, we're talking heads. No, we'll tell you who. What, we'll tell you how to think. It's kind of like, though, hey, if you're a government, please tell me how to think. Let me turn on my TV. I need to know how to think today. What am I supposed yeah. to do? It's uh, the Lego movie. Get me my instructions. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's, you know, everything is awesome, buddy. Everything is awesome in that regard. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's pretty terrible to, to see how all of that is, is happening. And I mean, 
Uh, John, if you want to, I know you you have a lot more insight on the whole Ukraine Russia thing. The fact that you saw these people, and if you go on X or any of these platforms, you can see these innocent Russians just being absolutely gunned down with with no uh, regard for life. The the response from the Russians is going to to escalate severely. They're not just going to kind of like placate this. It's it's only going to get worse in this regard. Ah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think you're probably right. And um, I mean, I feel like we, we probably um, treated it as, as far as we can. Uh, as you're just talking about the, the root issues, they go back a whole lot longer, even than 2014. But um, I, I think most of the intelligent folks, uh, the, the intelligent commentators on the Ukraine Russia situation, saw it in 2014. So they saw it with Maidan. You know, if, if you can just um, if you can start weaponizing the government and basically kick the sitting government out like they did, even though it was kind of a, a peaceful coup in a certain sense, there weren't a ton of deaths or anything, at least not that we're aware of. If you can do something like that and then start punishing people by confiscating things left and right, that's what they were doing in 2014. Then, you know, you can just expect the next side is going to be saving up time to do the same thing to you. I mean, it, 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 this is how, uh, you know, th this is how the world works, not how God works, but it's how, it's how the world works, you know? And so you're going to get envious and want to get back at them and take their, knock their good spot down. And then you just don't think of it while you're there that, uh, they're probably going to be laying, lying in wait for me the whole time. So, um, not, I mean, I hate to make it sound rational because there's, you know, in a certain sense with, uh, with any sort of horror like this, there's nothing rational about it, but it, it is kind of the habitual way that the world works with, uh, back and forth trying to, uh, take somebody else down like that. So, uh, but yeah, horrible to see that this is going on. And um, I feel bad for my, I've got a lot of, uh, well, a, a few really good friends in Slovakia. So I feel bad for them because they're kind of right on the, the edge there with Ukraine. And um, I, I think they're, um, they could be concerned about what might happen as well in the outbreak or in the, the, the wake of this. Yeah, remember yeah. before this all went down, Ukraine was number one on the most corrupt uh, list of governments. And what a couple was it a couple months ago? The uh, was Zelensky ended up killing one of the general his own generals because he gave an interview saying, "Oh yeah, we're at a stalemate. We're not winning anything." Oh, the next day they're having his his son's having a birthday party. He gets a, a birthday gift of a grenade that went off kind of and like took the, him uh, down, but hurt the kid. But kind of like oh, the I, Boeing whistleblower, you know, that guy yeah. was blowing the whistle on the Boeing products, and then all of a sudden he kind of ended up that suicide dead. <laughs> he just ended up dead. <laughs> so. and, and guys, so, like something that I've been thinking about, just tell me what you think of this. Uh, Cause I mean, I, I, I thought I, I kind of uh, honed in on what the issue was by, by thinking of this way, but let, let me know what you think. Um, the thing that, that seems to um, be the worst part of this whole situation is the, the modern conversation is about who's right, Ukraine or Russia. Mm -hmm. And, and we're, we're begging folks to just focus on, individual people or individual acts because like, you, you can say that a government acted this particular way at this moment and say all right that was the government of ukraine acting here that was the government of russia acting here or this particular guy or gal has been doing this consistently victoria newland you know <laughs> just mm -hmm. to maybe choose one but um when you turn the conversation to where it's just ukraine versus russia like you can't judge that there it's impossible. So basically like, we're, everybody's bouncing around like a, you know, a, a dog chasing a, a meat bone or something, because we're not talking about anything that anybody can discuss in any sensible way. You can't whitewash Ukraine. You can't whitewash Russia. You can't completely condemn Russia. You can't completely condemn Ukraine. You can, you know, you can talk about an individual person that is habitually evil and needs to be locked up, but to talk about an entire country like this, it just, it, it makes no sense. It, it takes the conversation from a, a level where like we can have some sort of discussion back and forth that we're just talking past one, one another. We've got, yeah. we've both got our sports team. Like, yeah, go wildcats, you know, go tigers. And it's like, well, you know, uh, any particular person on the team you want to see do well? No, just go my team, my team. Mm -hmm. By the way, Oakland beat the wildcats last night. And I, don't know if yeah. I, I know Steve was very happy about that. for some reason. That was a cool game to watch. There's a, the dude was, the dude was shooting lights out, but, uh, no, what he was saying, it made me think. Well, who's on your field of 64 bracket? You got oh, Ukraine versus Russia. Who you got to win? That's that's who they got. It's that's how we go with it. It's, it's, are they a four seed or are they a 12 seed? I mean, what, what you got here? And who's the other dog? I think Russia's got to be a solid four seed. Russia's got to be a solid four seed. 
<laughs> but you're right. I mean, when, even when we talk about even in the states, it's the federal government doing all this. It ain't Joe Blow in Delaware. It's Joe Blow in Delaware. No pun intended on Joe or anything like that. But it ain't, it ain't Phil and Fanny up in uh, New Jersey or anything like that or the Kwasnowskis in Georgia. It's D.C. that's doing a lot of this dirty work over for in our name, just like Zelensky's doing that in their name or uh, Putin doing something in their name or, you know, who pick ever. I mean, the, the terrorist, the, the son of the terrorist in uh, Israel, the Benny in their name. I mean, how many got so which somebody from the Oscars came out and say, I denounce what they're doing, which is wow. How would you never have seen that 10 years ago? But yeah, you can get your own little field of 64 uh, geopolitical bank thing going on and see who you have on your list. But that's what they're trying to get you. Let's pick one, pick a good guy and a bad guy. And then you can root against them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it is what it is. People, you know, because everything's been deteriorated down to white, you know, black and white, good yeah. guy, bad guy. It's Deeds. all Marvel comics. It's all superheroes. It's all comic books, right? You have to have a bad guy and a good guy. That's really. And that's why memes are so big because no one wants to read or do any research or dig in or anything like like that. That two hour thing on the Fourteenth Amendment. Who wants to watch? Two? I guarantee if I have a two hour video right now on how bad Pope Francis is, everyone and their brother is going to watch that darn thing. They're going to watch it six times, and then <laughs> and probably then be the most popular video. Too. Gonna, be the most yeah. popular video by a long shot. Yeah, they're going to make shorts. Out. They're going to do everything. I'm going to get sixteen emails. Have you watched this video? No, but. Get anybody to watch, learn anything on the 14th Amendment or history of uh, Ukraine and Russia relationships, anything like that? Fat chance. We lost them. We lost them. Did the Chinese no, get here. chickens? I'm here, They're man. Yeah, the Did you see this? The TikTokers got me, man. The TikTokers got me. So that's how it goes. Well, I was going to, until you came back, I was going to tell them, I had the chilling rise of the Chinese humanoid robots. It calls me every home. Yeah. One home I mean, we look going to be. That's gonna be the. I mean, they they introduce stuff like that. I know Elon has stuff like that down in in you know Brownsville. They're, they're One home we looked like at that. is is down the street, literally about uh, half mile away, is townhomes, and uh, they had a smart. I first time ever seen a smart house. I close the door to take this look, and then all of a sudden you hear this. Mm, I go, what happened? What was that? She goes, it's the smart locks. I go, yeah, no. Or just, I remember hearing stories of people being locked in their smart home during the lockdowns and they couldn't open the windows. Now, I never found any, no one did a report on that. Let's just say that the New York Times didn't go out and did an interview with any of these people. But there was rumors on the street, of, especially in China, about people being locked inside. They couldn't get out. And the last thing I want is the house being, there was a video, there was a, there was a video yesterday. I was watching the Oakland, uh, Kentucky game. And it was a smart house video that the Alexis wouldn't let the lady out of the house. It, it, Cause she, opened, what do you think you're doing, Jen or whatever name? Well, I'm going to go here. No, you're not. And I'm going, Oh, as, as she would go, Oh snap. It, but it was a, it was a joke. Cause she didn't leave without like her uh, snack or whatever, the, where they were selling on the thing. But if you watch that going, that could happen. They literally could lock that. You have an Alexis or anything inside robot, whatever. You know, those that's not out of the realm of possibility. They lock you inside that they're making commercials saying they can do it. <laughs> and they're making a joke about it. That thing will lock you inside until you bring your pizza out there with you. Wait, wait, what? Who's signing up oh, for yeah. that? I mean, there's gonna be a lot of people if the pizza actually gets delivered like through the front door. So I mean if they as long as as long as Domino's delivers and Netflix is streaming. 85 to 90 percent 95 percent of the population don't care no. they really don't i mean they'll argue about politics or whatever the case may be but as long as their creature comforts are met they don't care i, mean, I, uh, it's, I got the fourth anniversary of my mind the last two weeks i'm thinking of the guy that got arrested you know surfing <laughs> people on the beach out in the middle of nowhere right outside, yeah. getting a ticket and we're just as a what one video goes don't Ever let them off the hook on this? A Stasso had a video like that. Don't let them off the hook. How many people are just, you know, oh, forgot about her already? Oh, yeah. That, had, that wasn't too long ago. Yep. Yeah. No, it was absolutely, it's absolutely incredible how quickly people forget about these things because, you know, the, the American optimism bias is there. Like, oh, this won't happen again. Thing. Okay. You, you think that. Kind of like how um, we had this law in Texas, SB4. 
which Abbott signed that allows local law enforcement to arrest illegal criminal aliens um, and then put them in jail for deportation. Fort Worth, the police department came out and was like, yeah, we're not enforcing it. We're just not going to enforce it. And I was like, oh, good. So the, the police in Fort Worth have chosen criminal aliens over their citizens. Man, I have not gotten that much work on my ex account ever. People being like, oh, well, no, you're, you know, you're scared all the time. I'm like, dude, I'm just telling you what's happening in California and San Francisco and these places that will the cops will sit there and they will watch the criminal aliens rob you or steal your home or do anything. And they'll say, hey, that's the federal government's jurisdiction. We don't have any jurisdiction there. You're going to be begging the police officers to do something and they're going to go. It's not our call, man. Sorry. I, I don't know what to tell you. We you see Canada is not to enforce this law. So you're on your own. You and see Canada like, on that? What? You see the Canada uh, that just came down from them? There's also updated advice for all vehicle oh, yeah. owners. Yeah. A message echoed by Toronto police speaking at an Etobicoke safety meeting last month. Constable Marco Ricciardi had a new message for vehicle owners who keep their fobs in Faraday pouches. To prevent the possibility of being attacked in your home, leave your fobs at your front door. Because they're breaking into your home to steal your car. They're, they don't want anything else. A lot of them that they're arresting have guns on them, and they're not toy guns, they're real guns. They're loaded. That's why Galinsky says they will be installing the door stops and taking YPR's advice seriously. But she'd like more action from police. Yeah, you ain't getting it. Let's do it. You ain't getting it. By the way, yeah. we have those door stops, but they're not for people to come in. It's to keep the kids from opening the door to get out. I mean, it's, it's like an 800 pound thing. So we don't have it so that we can unlock it so that the kids can't reach up and open. They can unlock the door and open the door. These people are putting that in so they can't get in your home. <laughs> yeah, until it stops where, well, they just want to break into your home for your stuff. Well, they just want to, they just want to kill you, but not your kids. Well, and then yeah. notice what she said about the gun thing, or he said about the gun thing. You don't have it, citizens. You don't have because we've made laws. You're law by citizens. You like like sheep, just obey anything, and you turn in your weapons. But the guys that don't obey anything, they'll be armed. Free and, what, and for those Fourteenth Amendment uh, incorporation people, you saw that story that came out. The oh, they they just said that the illegals have a right to carry. Well, if you're a Fourteenth Amendment guy, oh, that's on you, ruling. NRA. That's on you guys. I, lo I love the ruling. You know why? Because you can use it, turn it around, and get the ATF pretty much defunded. Yeah, I know, but I'm just talking ruling... about you see the bag, you see the people oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. we can't have that. Wait a minute, pick one. You can't yeah. have everyone universal all there, all, and then say, well, they can't have it. No, it's I, I think it's one or the other. So yep. it's on them for, you know, like you said, it, you know, natural right. If you want to have natural right involved in it, fine. Oh, yeah. my thing about I mean, this whole, that whole situation, convert the guys to Catholic, convert them and you have no big deal. If we if if Catholics are more upset that they're Catholics invading the the union, and it's an invasion. Yes. And they are coming from Catholic nations. So they got it in their brains or their heads. Some aren't. No. But all right. What's the solution? We're going to get upset about it and just, you know, you know, hey, we get, you know blah, blah, blah. convert them. I know that's yeah. I know that's nutty of me to say that, but that's you know, and they go, hey, they'll get think. more votes for the Democratic Party. Is that only thing we think about? What if I you mean, convert honestly, them to the right. Catholic Church religion? Then you got more Catholics coming in, to, and then you then they come into the. And you're not saying that's a political thing, but there's there, you know the harvest is coming in. They're literally coming to your front door. Yep, yep, and for me, it's very simple. If anybody can have a firearm, then the ATF doesn't need to exist because there's no way to track it. So you go, yeah. goodbye. Goodbye, federal. Goodbye, ATF. Goodbye, NFA. Goodbye, all that stuff. So yeah. greatest ruling ever. Greatest yeah. ruling ever, in my opinion. Uh, so I didn't I don't freak out about it because my my opinion is this. Oh, no, these people. OK, get your guns and train harder. That's, yeah. you know, from a, from a practical standpoint, get yourself a firearm and learn how to use it. OK, so that's. You know, you think about like, uh, anyway, not the Wild West, but think about the times when our forefathers were, you know, traveling to uh, the plains. Mm -hmm. it, 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 there were no laws to keep the Indians that they, they, we were, you know, going in their, their backyards from having guns. They ate guns. All right, what? Well, how do you survive? Yeah. You know, you you learn to survive and fight and all that, but it's 
you know, you, do you want freedom and liberty or do you not? Do you want DC to tell you how to live? And then, you know, everything has to go through the federal departments. That's yeah. That's, I mean, is the longer, the longer you continue to look to DC with your little DC prayer mat, the, the worse it's going to be. It's, it's really that simple. You either take responsibility for yourself or you don't. And that's fine. If you don't want to take responsibility for yourself, you know, move up into like Maryland or move up into those areas and, you know, all have your little, your little, you know, uh, area around DC, but just leave me alone, man. Leave me alone. Let me do my thing. That's really all it is. So. I didn't get to say thank you to Amy Jane, but so thanks. I was in my one of my soapbox rants, so my apologies. I mean, we thanks. had to have at least we had to have at least one before we we go to Saint in the Week and uh, and and Cry Room because we're right about at that time. So of course I'm going to ask John, and John's going to say no. But John, do you have a Saint of the Week and Cry Room for me? Can I punt? Yep, absolutely. I That's what I was hoping season, for. <laughs> I was hoping for. I'm going to go first. My Saint of the Week um, is is going to be. Uh, Candace, Candace Owens, oh, yeah, who just yeah. got booted. I, I'm going first because I don't want anybody else to take it. You find somebody else. Uh, she just got booted from the Daily Wire. She's been talking about becoming Catholic. I know her husband's Catholic. Um, she's talking about coming on, along on that. She made the mistake of talking about a certain group of people um, and and not towing the Daily Wire line, which is why Matt Walsh and and uh, Michael Knowles, who are very, I like, I respect Knowles a lot. I think Knowles is a very classy guy, very smart guy, very good speaker. Uh, Walsh, I think, is kind of just a brute. Um, you know, they're both they're both great, uh, and they both do great work. Can't work for the Daily Wire. I've been saying that forever. I'll continue to say it. Candace is the latest victim of that. But uh, I know she's people call her a grifter. Folks, if you're in any one of those, if you're in a million plus followers, if you're part of the blaze, if you're part of the Daily Wire, you're part grifter in some way, shape or form. That's the only way you get to that. That's the only way you send to that platform. Uh, but good for her. Uh, hopefully she'll be able to continue to, to to speak out. I'm sure somebody else will pick her up because she is a name. I don't know if the blaze will. I don't know if tenant media will. Somebody somebody will pick her up there. Uh, but good for her because she stood on her convictions. She could easily kowtowed to the mob and and let everything go uh but she stayed she stayed pretty firm so good for her uh my cry room is everybody who bullied or who was talking about kate middleton princess kate middleton and about like all these other things yeah she's got cancer she just came out with a video today talking about how she has abdominal cancer and that she's fighting it um good it is interesting to note that her and her husband took every single jab that came you know, they took every single one, and now we're starting to see, kind of like with everybody else, people in their 40s who took them, you're seeing cancers rise in, in those. Are the two connected? I'm not making a statement that they may be, but, you know, there's, uh, yeah, the, the the fact is that, you know, she made her statement, and and good for her. She And all these people kind of just, they, they, they were like a dog with a bone as far as all these things. It was just one of these things for clicks and, and all of this other stuff about like, oh, what's going on with the royal family here? First of all, I don't know why Americans are so stinking obsessed with the royals. It, like, get a job, get a life uh, in that regard. And secondly, it's like, you know, whatever, man, and, and let them do what they have to do. But she finally came out with a statement. Everybody was and, and now and Steve and I were joking about it off air. That like, oh, it's very interesting that she's coming out with the statement the same day that the Russians are getting blown up. Uh, so nobody wants to talk about that, you know, how these things happen. But there you go. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support. And here we are playing understanding it. whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment. But most importantly, 
it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. So there you go. That's As that, I said to them, I am well. I'm getting stronger. One of the few royals that people like, but there you go. Y'all bullied a, a bullied a cancer patient. Great job, guys. Well, uh, James Evan Pilato of uh, Media Monarchy, which I like. I like the I like the info he gets from it. But viewer warning: he cusses a lot. So if your ears are, you know, it's. I wish you wouldn't. But uh, he has a great line on when you hear stuff like this. He goes, "Just Google in the symptom and type in vaccine afterwards." <laughs> Nine times out of ten, you end up coming up with, oh yeah, they're related. It's because he has all these guys that are like on Thursdays the death day, and they'll, they'll go through all these people in their thirties, forties, fifties that are getting cancers and all this, and it comes out hundred percent of the time. All these guys are quadruple jab, triple jab, hundred percent jab, all that. And, oh, they're totally not related. How do we do it? I don't know. How did this guy just drop dead at 30, 40 years old? It's oh, it's normal now. Yeah, they give that thousand dollars to the uh, dinner plate. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> will not let that go away. Um, so what do you got, bud? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Uh, you my saying, I'm going to I'll go with uh, somebody from the great state of South Kakalaki. Uh, He's going to go with the entire Oakland team that beat Kentucky. That's his That's his group this week. Dude, I mean, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if you're watching, it's just like the uh, – uh, I'm sure you probably saw the Jason with like thing. We talked about the uh, uh, diversity groups going after Caitlin, uh, Caitlin Clark, the all time scorer for women's basketball, which I, I'm hundred percent with keep pistol Pete over here, her over here. Don't bring the yep. two together. Yep. Totally different years, plays, all that stuff. And obviously, you know, things like that. Three point line, three point line, shot clock. I mean, just all that. Uh, but uh, yeah, they were trying to, they, they put her in the worst, uh, the toughest division or bracket in the league, in the thing, just to get her to get her bounced out of the tournament. But on the other side, you got the NIL, the NIL. I mean, these guys are making millions and they, you know, the whole saving thing, uh, the more I keep thinking about that, dude, you made how many million? And that's not smacking him on the millions, but it was okay when you jumped around and you get the best thing. And the, now these guys are just doing, they only care about the money part. And then you got, it's, it's just, they destroyed college sports. I mean, it was already you. At least back when the movie The Program was was uh, put together. If anybody seen the movie the Program, you knew people got you know a dollar. You know, you had people that did that. You, the uh, was it blue chips? I mean, that yep. stuff literally happened. We we were. Yep. I, I played college. I played college basketball and baseball. I, we saw that happen. Everyone knows it. You know. We, my college team, we should have been banned. We had all kinds of stuff going on. They were betting during batting practice. It was nuts. <laughs> Got, half the guys were on steroids, which even in minor leagues is like that. But uh, these guys, it's it's so bad. I don't even know who these – I was telling her, I was telling my wife watching it, I go, I, I enjoy the game. And especially this time of year, I used to watch it. I watched every game back then. I, I, haven't, I know they're playing now, and – I missed the first half. I went to them back in 1996 and was at the first rounds in Atlanta. Great. I remember Michigan playing, Kentucky playing back in the glory days. But uh, they ruined it. I have no – no one knows who's on the teams anymore. They transfer all the time. The guy that, that was the stud for them, they had 38, I think he had. He had 10 threes, tied the record. Or no, he was one short of the record for a game. He was a transfer, fifth year. They went, went for the protocol. He would never have been playing. Uh, so I mean, it's just it's just weird seeing. I got a, a family friend of mine that he graduated. I told his dad, I thought he's done. He's playing a fifth year in Ohio State baseball. How does that work? I go, oh, no. It's because at the time it used to be whenever your foot stepped on the ten, you had a clock, and then you no matter what happened, you unless you registered, you had the five years to play four. Now these guys are getting five years to play five, four years to play five, and I, I don't know what the heck. But anyways, they're college quarterbacks that are older than some NFL rookies. I mean, they, they've been jumping around and, and so forth. Yeah. Well, Caitlin's going to take a pay cut to go yeah. play pro ball. I mean, she's making a couple million right now in her name, image, and likeness to go play at Indiana. Well, she ain't gonna, she might not make as much, but she could have played one more year, stat yeah, pattern stats, thing, and get paid more. The, the thinking is with her is that Indiana is a lot safer of a team to draft her than the San Francisco expansion team next year. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So for her, just, it's kind of like, yeah, I just – 
you know, if you're going to do it. These guys are making it. millions now. You used to not, I mean, show you how, how crazy it was back then. Anyway. She'll make we she'll had, be fine. Well, they had, back when I was in college, I remember uh, South Carolina baseball team had four guys get suspended for playing golf. Hmm. The booster ran a golf course where where the team where their where they chant where their tournaments were played at. So these guys just wanted to play a round of golf and they could they didn't have the money to play. The guy just let them play for free, suspended for playing a round of golf. Not that they didn't take a car. Nowadays you get cars. There's a video of Utah that everybody got a scholarship, got a brand new car and millions of dollars. It's nuts right now. But anyway, sorry for the. Random thing, but I, I like I like March Madness. I just think you know, that was a cool game to watch. But so here's South Carolina, my saint of the week. Sure, in here in Columbia is for me to not even vote red on the board. Y'all might not know this: a, a dark money entity that was created on Tuesday, the day after we voted for this. I went home and a, a attack piece went out in my whole district about the fact that I voted for this. I get that the people in Columbia that the lobby wants me to either not vote or to vote green on this. But my constituents want me to vote red and they want their tax money spent on core government functions, on their roads, on their schools. That's what they want their money spent on. So they don't want us in here trying to play this government planning thing where we and our bureaus can figure out where the jobs should be, who should be employed, how much money should be allocated where in the private sector. It never works. It's socialism. It's never worked anywhere before. So what are we doing to trying to do it here? But wait, would you consider the fact that South Carolina's track record on bringing major projects into this state is has a winning record and therefore again commerce should be listened to rather than those people back in your district that may oh, not have oh, ever brokered a oh, deal may not understand oh, what it means of being a project may not understand economic oh, incentives the simpletons so what your suggestion is we should listen to the people back home yeah. in your district rather than the people at Commerce that have been successful at bringing these mega deals to South Carolina. Mr. Rutherford, I don't think that you could have espoused a philosophy that disagrees more fundamentally uh, than me. I, I, I completely disagree with you, and I, I think that you believe what you just said. But no, I 100% am going to listen to the people back home who I represent in this Voted house. Me, and you right? should listen to the 40,000 people in your, uh, your area and not and not the bureaucrats at Commerce, and not the lobbyists, and not the multi-billion dollar international corporations. You should listen to your constituents like I am. So yes, I will always fall back on the common sense of the wonderful people from Taylor's and Greenville East Side far more than I will ever listen to unelected bureaucrats, other representatives in here who have been here for far too long and have maybe managed a whole lot of these deals, and far more than I will ever listen to any member out so there. Oh, that was I love it. Brilliant. Perfect. I mean, <laughs> they cloned that idea and everyone. I mean, that, that's a good area, too. That's where Prince of Peace is in South Carolina, where it's the uh, yeah. Trap Mass has been. And he's been doing pre-55 before. It was cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, uh, he, might, he may even go there. I know quite a few guys that are from that parish. I've been applauding at him. But uh, my, I guess the... With the uh, cry rooms, well, let me get. Yeah. Let me just bring up a couple things because we'll probably won't do it next week because the Holy Week. Here's Belay's first hundred days. Argentines struggle to make ends meet. You know, support for president remains high. Uh, this guy got. Yep. Uh, you hear about this guy? He was on. Uh, yeah. He was on Rogan. Rogan. He was arrested after dismembered body found in New York. New York City. His New York City. But he was on Rogan, so who cares? Uh. Chief fans during that frigid game, they're having amputations because you're crazy enough to go to a game uh, that's you know, right. sub zero. And guess what? Nobody on the Chiefs organization cares that you, they're not paying for your amputation. They oh. they were happy to take your money, but they're not gonna they're not gonna help you out. No. Not I'll go all. with I go I guess Crabman would be the uh, it's just it's social media. It's just the guys is we're supposed to, we got talking head we got guys doing talking heads in Catholic world doing. I mean, I saw the conference. You, everyone knows about a certain conference that's going on in uh, Florida. Huh? In Florida. Oh, I don't know about that one. But the oh, one the I'm other one. About, oh, you're talking about that? I mean, there's two the of Montana them. Montana one, sure. the the former trad conference, whatever. Yeah. yeah and I, I look like, who cares? You know why are we why are we so triggered that every time we see something, we gotta talk about, it, post about it, repeat, we gotta make videos about it. 
By the way, marketing wise, you've given them free advertisement. They're the talk of the internet in the Catholic world right now. Thanks to you guys who are out you there saying all this stinks it. and all that. You're helping them get more publicity. <laughs> If you don't like something, just ignore it. It's kind of like that idea of a of a tree falls. Does anybody hear it? And you know, one's in the, no one's in the forest. Do you hear it? Well, we just went, we have thirty thousand people watching it, going, "Hey, let's let's magnify that that uh that crash when it comes down." Uh, again, Francis, you know, saying something in a book that you know about the jab. How many guys? How many tries are going to buy that book? I don't know anybody going to. I the only reason I bought the last one, Let's Dream, is because it was. I wanted to see what he had to say regarding uh, uh, globalism, war, or WF, and things like that. Which there's stuff in there that I, you know, I was looking at that stuff all the time, you know, four years ago. And yeah, I can see it in, in the the reset book and his book easily. I'm not going to buy this one. Why? Do you, who cares? Just to make more videos on that. What you know? That's the same thing he said four years ago, three years ago. Okay, let's get mad. The uh, well, who's that lady that Knowles interviewed? Uh, Gina, Jane, Jane, something. Oh, Pearl. Pearl. Yeah. Who is? That? I have no idea who Pearl. Who? Do you She's know who Pearl is? That's pretty much it. She's a TikToker. Okay. okay. Why do everyone care about Pearl? This again. All right. Ignore. Focus right. on what you're supposed to be doing. It's you know, Passion Time Week. We're talking about Pearl. We're talking about a conference. We're talking about. Francis' book that, again, three things that mean nothing to anybody in the world. But, hey, we're going to put the focus on that. That was a video that uh, on the, from the Ever Evan, Evan Contillos that talked about stuff like this. And he was he was basically going into it, saying that, you know, people are doing apologetics without the, the charity, without the love and desire for people's souls is demonic apologetics. I mean, it's just, that was at the 50 minute mark. I shared it the other day. No one cared about watching. If I entitled that the Pope sucks, I would have gotten 100,000 views easily. So, easily. I mean, it's in a sense, we could all be thrown in the cry room because we want the drama, 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 drama. And it's, you know, it's just amazing. And so, I'm, you know, throwing half the Catholic world, I guess, online in the cry room. Might as well. Well, Might take that back. Let me, and let me add a little honorable mention. So, I'll give it to Jonathan. Pre 55, uh, the Holy Week's coming up. Pre 55 is the is the way to go. Obviously, the guys that are going to say, "Hey, the Notice Order sucks." Go to the go to ours, which which they only do the 62, the Bugnini Tritium. Where are they? They're on a milk carton box right now because they're not going to be found because they're going out there to say the Novus Ordo is terrible. You got to stay away from it. You got to do this, do this. Well, come to our Novus Ordo traditional mass for the Tritium because that's what that is. I'm just saying, is we need some consistency in our lives. That's not possible, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, anyway, thank you, Steve. Fantastic. One more, one more in there. Um, anyway, we uh, we'll probably take next week off because I'll be driving to El Paso on Thursday to spend time with family. I was going to tell Steve that off air, but I might as well tell him that now. Um, so we will not see you until after Easter. Uh, we hope you have a blessed Easter and a wonderful Easter tide, and we will talk to you on the other side of it. Uh, from everybody here at News from the Pew, God bless and viva Cristo Rey. <laughs>